Hi, welcome back. It's been a couple years since I installed Hyper-V Server 2019 in my lab. I wanted to revisit it, starting to look at Server 2022. So here I'm just confirming the existing version number of my Hyper-V server running system info command. And that confirms it. It is Server 2019 at 1763.107. There's extended support ends on January 9, 2029. So we got about five years of Server 2019 Hyper-V server. So I go looking for Hyper-V server 2022 and look at here, there, there isn't one. Yeah, got server 2012, server 2012 R2, server 2016 and server 2019 Hyper-V server. What takes its place is this Azure Stack HCI. You're basically extending the same infrastructure that Azure uses into your on-premise data center. Sounds kind of expensive to me, especially if my existing servers won't run Azure Stack HCI. If you're buying new hardware, you have to have a subscription in Azure, get your server licensing to consider. For a small guy like me where I just want a lab with some trial operating systems running for a few months, uh, I, I'm not going to shell out the bucks for that. <laughs> So we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do here. Purpose-built solution for hybrid infrastructure for running virtual machines. Here you go. The register has an article. Hyper-V Sync standalone Hyper-V server wants you using Azure Stack HCI for VMs. Well, you know, from the Microsoft perspective, they're not supporting two different things. They're not supporting servers in Azure running on the Azure Stack HCI and servers on Hyper-V in the data center. So I guess from that perspective, having one version, one type of software to support, they're certainly an advantage for Microsoft. I'm going to be interested to see what kind of advantage there is for the cost. So yeah, you're going to have to use Azure. You'll need an Azure subscription. You know, and that's just it. You know, for older companies that have a long established physical presence in a data center, you want to like suddenly go to the cloud and all of a sudden you start having these cloud charges coming in and the people in the corner office go, hey, but what about all that money we spent on the hardware that's in the data center? You can't just like shut all that down and make that cost go away and then suddenly start, you start going from, you know, CapEx, capital expense to operating expense. And when you have both of them together, it's really difficult to manage on a large scale. Yeah, I like how he's commenting here. He really thought it was a bold move, free Hyper-V server. Well, it's gone in 2029. And I, the cost of vCenter, you, you, pay, you pay a lot for vCenter. In my lab at home, I like Hyper-V server because it's free and I only have to install it once. It doesn't run out after 180 days or anything like that. And uh, the VMs on there, I'm loading them on a trial basis, but you can use slmanager.vbs slash rearm up to six times so that you can get three years out of your operating systems on a trial basis. Let's talk more about Azure Stack HCI. Yeah, it's that hyper-converged infrastructure. Will my hardware run Azure Stack HCI? You can read down at the very bottom. <laughs> Therefore, it is unlikely you can use your existing hardware for Azure Stack HCI. However, you can check the official documentation for more information on hardware requirements. So we're going to have to buy new hardware just to use Azure Stack HCI. Okay, leave a comment down below. Give this video a like. And before you go watch more of my Windows administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.